ESX Installation. In this course, we will focus on installing and configuring ESX Server and Virtual Center. Later on, we will also learn about the additional features, Virtual SMP, vMotion, VMware HA, VMware DRS, and VMware Consolidated Backup. To begin my ESX installation, I've inserted my ESX Build CD into my server and rebooted it. You may need to adjust your host machine's BIOS boot device priority from a floppy disk or the hard drive to the CD-ROM. You can often change the primary boot device by using the system's boot menu. Generally, it's a function key such as F12. The ESX installer runs in one of two modes, graphical or text. Graphical mode is the typical mode to choose, however, installing in text mode can be useful if you are accessing the ESX server console using a remote management adapter and the connection between the remote console and the ESX server is slow or the video card is not supported. I've selected graphical mode and it brings me to the ESX Server 3 installer splash screen and I'm just going to click next to continue. Here we select what type of keyboard we have. I've got US English so I'm going to click on next and then we select what type of mouse we have. I'm going to click next. Now it's going to search for previous VMware ESX installations. If we have a previous installation it will give us the upgrade option. And if we're upgrading from ESX Server 2.1 or later we can use the upgrade option. Otherwise click install to install a fresh copy of ESX. Upgrade will allow preservation of an existing ESX server install and maintain all current configuration files and directories. Install will perform a clean installation and I'll click next. This is the end user license agreement. Read it and click accept then click next. The CD media test provides an opportunity to validate a downloaded ISO image prior to installing. The keyboard and mouse options will permit additional keyboard languages to be identified. Mouse configurations are not a critical setting. After installation the mouse setting is ignored since X Windows System, Linux's graphical user interface, is not supported from the service console. This brings us to our partitioning options. The following partitions are required for the installation of an ESX server. Slash boot. Swap. Slash root. VMFS3 and VMK core. The partition slash VAR slash log is optional. VMware recommends a separate partition for log files to prevent filling up the root file system with large log files. The minimum size is 500 megabytes, but VMware recommends 2,000 megabytes for the log partition. The VMFS3 partition holds a VMware file system, VMFS. A VMFS is a file system that is optimized for storing virtual machines. The VM kernel core dump partition is only used in the event of a serious error inside ESX server. If ESX server crashes, it records a post-mortem in this partition so that you or VMware support can diagnose the problem. There are three locations for storing ISO images. VMFS data store, NFS data store, and the slash VM images directory on the service console. Storing ISO images on a VMFS or NFS data store allows you to share the ISO images across multiple ESX servers, as long as the data store is visible to the ESX server. Storing ISO images in the service console's slash VM images directory makes images available to that ESX server only. Furthermore, by default, 
The slash VM images directory is part of the service console's root file system. If you make slash VM images its own partition, then that is a better alternative. In general, we recommend using a VMFS or NFS data store to store your ISO images. In addition to slash VAR slash log, the slash OPT directory is also used to hold log files, specifically for the VMware HA product. Therefore, you might consider having a dedicated partition for slash OPT as well. If we'd like, we can select which disk we would like our ESX operating system to be installed on, and we can also use the recommended partitions if we'd like. This is the best option because it gives you the option to modify the partitions later if you'd like. The installer will examine all LUNs it can see, not only on the local controller, but out on the SAN as well. If a LUN is not partitioned, a pop-up box for each LUN will prompt you to initialize this drive because its partition table was unreadable. Note, watch for unpartitioned LUNs. Be careful not to initialize any LUN that might contain production data. If the ESX server is connected to the SAN, make sure that the SAN is properly zoned and masked. The warning dialog box allows you to make sure that you are initializing the correct drives. Unless you are installing the ESX server to boot from SAN, a best practice is to hide the LUNs or unplug all fiber channel attached SAN storage from the server to avoid this particular scenario. If you'd like to create all the partitions yourself, you can click Advanced and then click Next. The Advanced Options screen presents choices for specifying the ESX server bootloader options. Ideally, the bootloader should be placed where the service console partitions reside. It is imperative that this drive match the first boot device as defined in the host machine's BIOS. Otherwise, the ESX server will not boot. Additionally, for legacy systems that store the BIOS in the MBR, use the From a Partition selection. I'm going to use Recommended and I'll just click Next. This lets you know that all data will be deleted from this drive. Click Yes. And these are all your different partitions that are set up. If you'd like, you can modify them. For example, this partition just happens to be your data store. And we're going to talk about data stores later on. But if we'd like, we can highlight it, click Edit, and modify it accordingly. If we'd like, we can give it a fixed size and specify the size up here. I'm going to leave all the defaults and click Next. Here we specify how the ESX server will boot, and most of the time the default will be the correct option. All available install locations, both local and remote, are listed in the drop-down menu. It is important to make sure you correctly identify the target location. If the target location contains existing partitions, then a warning dialog box will prompt you for a confirmation to remove all existing partitions. Each target location is identified by the device that serves it. In our case, the device listed here is the local SCSI device. If we'd like to, we can also boot from a partition. I'm going to boot from this drive that's selected. I'll click Next. Here we specify our network interface card and give the IP address of our ESX server and the host name. If we have a specific network card that we want to use to connect to our ESX server, we would select it here. Select the appropriate network interface for management access to the service console. Fill in the necessary TCP IP perimeters for network operations. Although the network interface can be configured to obtain an address from a DHCP server, VMware strongly recommends using static IP address for access. And I'm just going to type in the IP address that I'll use for my ESX server. And I'm going to use 192.168.0.0.0. With a subnet mask of 
0.255.255.0. And you want to input your correct gateway and DNS. Next, you want to specify the host name for your ESX server. I'm going to call my ESX server ESX20.viadmin.com. And down below, you can specify the VLAN ID. It says, leave blank if you are unsure whether your network requires a VLAN ID. If the network requires a VLAN ID, enter it in the provided field. And down below here, you can create a default network for your virtual machines. If you select create a default network for virtual machines, your virtual machines will share a network adapter with the service console which is not the recommended configuration for optimum security. Since the service console should always be on a separate private network, this option should never be used except in a test environment. If you have only two network adapters, then most likely you'll want to leave this checked, and this way you will share that network adapter with the service console and have the other network adapter dedicated to vMotion. And then I'll click Next. Here we select our time zone. You can either use the map to select the most appropriate location for the desired time zone, or you can click on the drop-down list to select location, or use the UTC offset. Those are time values based on the offset hour from Greenwich Mean Time. There is also the option to automatically compensate for daylight saving time, if appropriate. My time zone is correct, so I'll click Next. Now we'll specify the root password. ESX server requires a minimum of six characters for the root password. It is considered best practice to implement a password strategy that introduces complexity which might include mixed case non-standard characters and numeric values. I'll just type it in and confirm and the root user is going to be the super user on your ESX server that can do anything and everything so you want to make sure the password is secure I'll click next this gives us a nice summary of our installation review it and then go ahead and click next when you're ready and ESX server will install okay the installation completed successfully now we'll just want to remove our CD out of our server and click the finish button and your ESX server will go ahead and reboot.